Here we go. Hello and welcome to Mountain Air, a private airstrip in western North Carolina. Our runway is 2,875 feet long at an elevation of approximately 4,500 feet in So it's an ideal spot to show you the unique features and capabilities of the MU-2. Every aircraft design is a series of compromises based on the design of all the other aircrafts. Many of these design criteria are in mutual opposition. For instance, designed from a clean sheet of paper of the long body variant of the type. It has a maximum gross weight at takeoff of 11,575 pounds and a useful load of 3,725 pounds. It can carry a 1,000 pound payload with full fuel, but more increasingly, it Seventy foot runway over an FAA certified fifty foot obstacle. So, how did the MU2 get its high cruise speed? Well, the short wing is a big part of it. plus 157 pounds of jet thrust. Coming around, we can take a look and see that we've got short wing, which gives us a high wing loading, about 65 pounds per square foot, similar to a Learjet. That gives us a side benefit of a great ride in turbulence. So, here's the problem. We've got a short, highly loaded wing which gives us a high VS for the MU-2 100 knots. We've got to do something about that to get us into the short strips that we pilots want to use because remember, the U in MU-2 stands for utility. How did Mitsubishi get the kind of approach speeds we need? Well, they did it by using full span, double slotted Fowler flaps. When these flaps are extended, not only do they increase the camber of the wing, like any flap would, they actually increase the surface area of the wing by 25%. Reducing VS of 100 knots in the cruise configuration to a low 76 knots at the flaps 40 short field landing configuration. So now, we've got a wing that can be optimized for either high speed cruise or low speed landing top performance. But now we've got another dilemma. We've got an already short wing that we've stuffed full of flap. So that raises two questions. One, where do we put the fuel to get a good range? And how do we turn this thing? Well, the range problem was solved by tip tanks. 90 gallons a side, 180 gallons total. So 180 gallons out of the MU-2's 403 gallons is carried in the tips. For turning the airplane, Mitsubishi opted for spoilers, just like they did in the Diamond One, which later became the Beach Jet and is now the Hawker 400. They work great. They virtually eliminate adverse yaw. 
but they do cause the MU-2 to have unique single-engine handling characteristics, similar to jet single-engine procedures. Speaking of single-engine procedures, you may have heard that the MU-2s have an issue with a high VYSE, or blue line airspeed, of 150 knots versus the rotation speed of 100 knots. The numbers these way, this way misunderstands the nature of single-engine operations in multi-engine aircraft. If you lose an engine on takeoff, VYSE is not the most important speed. It's VXSE, because that's the speed that will keep you out of the tree. Second, the flaps configuration for takeoff is always, or nearly always, 20 degrees. 95% of takeoffs in the MU-2 are done at 20 degrees flaps. The rest are done at 5 degrees flaps, but they're never intentionally done at 0 degrees flaps. So the 150 knot flaps 0 blue line speed is not an initial part of the engine failure after takeoff scenario. Flaps 20 VXSE, which is the speed that we want, is 125 knots. And we reach that speed so quickly after rotation that any incremental risk compared to other aircraft types, if it exists at all, is certainly a manageable one. Uh, another thing that the, uh, that the spoilers don't do is they don't cause the MU-2 to roll about a wingtip. The MU-2 rolls the same way every other airplane rolls, about its longitudinal axis. There are no particular crosswind procedures that are unique to the MU-2. About the only thing to remember for the MU-2 on landing is it does have a fairly narrow track landing gear. So you have to be careful on the deceleration and the rollout to make sure that the props come into reverse at the same rate. But that's important in any airplane, crosswind or not. That brings us to the last major component of the MU-2 design that gives us the great short field feel performance that we enjoy, and that's the landing gear. As you can see, it's constructed very massively. It's connected to the fuselage versus the wings. So these are some of the design features that give the MU-2 its capabilities. If you'd like to learn more, stay tuned for the rest of the story.